Hey everybody, it's uh, J.E. She, her, fronting. Welcome back to the license game hole. Uh, this is another one of those um, videos wherein we're going to look at a game we have been playing off stream and talk about it. And I'm going to do some of these missions we didn't really touch while we're talking. So this is Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Uh, this game was released a few years ago based on the Lord of the Rings franchise, I guess. Uh, so let's talk Let's talk about how it is as an adaptation first. I'm going to go ahead and put a spoiler warning here because we are going to discuss kind of the story at large. Um, the story's not very good, but there's probably people who care, so... Do I need that? No. Okay. There's probably people who care, so let's not spoil it for them. But yeah, you'll, I might be playing a little poorly because I'm going to be looking over my notes. Oh, and also there's a gore warning for this entire video. Just so you know. You, you might have picked that up from all that blood. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about this game as an adaptation. Um, it's not good. It's very, it's very dark and gory. And that feels so antithetical to Lord of the Rings. It feels a lot like the game was made darker for purposes of, like, um, attracting, like, teenage boys who would otherwise be like, Lord of the Rings is boring, which is, you know, it's kind of how we feel about Lord of the Rings. And this game does, we do enjoy this game. We're not a teenage boy, we're a 30-something-year-old non biny system. Girl-shaped non biny But, you know. <laughs> we still have the approximate taste of a teenage boy, so... It worked for us, but, you know, we have... I don't think a lot of hardcore Lord of the Rings fans would enjoy how dark and gory this is. Uh, the story is, as I said, it's not good. Um, it, so there's stretches of the game where the story just kind of drops off and you're just focusing on killing like war chiefs and captains and that was definitely the better part of the game when I didn't, wasn't interrupted with any cutscenes of the story. That was pretty good, huh? Well, we got an ability out of that. What should I get? Notice we've got some holes. Uh, we might never use Shadow Strike, but I'll buy this. Okay. What else do I have? Oh, right. Let's let's find a new mission first. I could kill one of the captains. What's a war chief? I don't want to kill a war chief. Let's go over here. Killing the captains and the war chiefs is best, definitely the best part of the game. <laughs> Anyways, what was I? I'm gonna lose my mind a lot because I'm gonna be going back and forth between notepad and games, so expect me to say, now where was I a lot? Like a goddamn GTA character when you have to interrupt them or whatever. Oh, you guys wanna fight? I don't really want to, so. I like, I like how you can just start a mission and any enemies in the area just go away. That's a very convenient feature. Much appreciate it. Uh, flesh burner. It's got candle head. Um, one of the things with the story is that all the characters kind of feel like either stand-ins or, like, uh, most of the characters feel like stand-ins. Like, Talion here is obviously kind of, uh, zero flavor Aragorn. Glad you can make it! We're your welcoming party. We? We who? I just see one man in front of me. Uh, but yeah, you meet Marwen, and she's going through the thing that happened to Theoden in the movie, and it's like, oh, this is the thing that happened to Theoden. I know. This isn't... Whoa, 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 what's the... what's the house? Why is everybody on fire? Uh, and you meet this, like... Dwarf who's very much, uh, why can't I, 
I cannot get intel from me. Oh well. Strain you. Or your guy will kill you for me, I guess. That's weird. Whatever. But yeah, it's like... So the dwarf you meet is also the best character, but it's all like... These characters are clearly just meant to be stand-ins for, for characters from the uh, movie slash books. And so you don't really grow attached to any of them because it's like, oh, you're like Gimli. And then it's like, well, you don't really actually think of him as anything but the Gimli guy. Or this guy is like Eric One Light. And its whole plot is like he's getting revenge for the death of him and his family. And he's like come back to life. And it's... So it turns out this Wraith, you can see him whenever we are uh, doing our bow. But you can also go in Wraith mode. Um... He's Sela Brimbor, who helped to forge the One Ring. It feels sacrilegious. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, the guy who forged the One Ring became a wraith and hang hung out with uh, Stabby McViolence, and they both killed a bunch of people. And it's like, what? There's also parts where you meet Golem that also feel similarly sacrilegious to us. Um, it's also artifacts you find that do have better story notes, we thought, but also it still has the same problem where it all feels so grimdark. Wait, let me find one of our artifacts so we can talk about it directly. There's like, like Hoblade. When we look at it, it's like blah, blah, blah. Every, a bunch of people died. Their land was consumed. They lived on. He's in jail for a reason. But then you look at the thing and it's like you want to live forever? everybody's just so grim dark and caring only about themselves. It's just kinda it wears on you after a while, you know? No way uh I think that's all I have to say about the story of this game. It's it's not good, generally. Uh, that all being said, this game is fun as hell. <laughs> uh, you can kind of tell from watching me play already, but this game's kind of like... It's kind of a combination of Assassin's Creed and, like, the Arkham games. It absolutely has the Arkham games as a combat system. Like, it's the same damn system. It's all made by Warner Brothers. Should have brutalized him. Oh, well. Have brutalized or uh, branded him. So the first half of this game is pretty good, but then in the second half you get the branding ability. Ooh. Oh, Berserker. Oh my god, this is gone insane. Hold on. That'll help. They're out the riffraff. So in the second half you get the branding system, which is really cool because branding and. Uruk lets you, uh... Here to save us oops, all. I can't... Don't give up. can't scroll my notes and play the game at the same time. Hold on. The second half is really cool because you get the ability to, um... Control orcs. Let me let me do that with one of them. Let me find an orc to control. Should show that off. And once you get that, and then you start, like... The second half objective has you, like, branding all the war chiefs and getting to see, like, Sauron's army fill up with your own pawns is just so cool. Like, you get, like... There's too many down there. I'm not gonna get them. You get, like, a bit into it, and then it's like... Like, you can go through a base and just get a bunch of people on your side and then have them all fight at once. Or you can have a captain, like show up to fight another captain except really he's working for you and then you brainwash the other dude too and it's like it's it's just so cool I want more games doing that let me let me take control of enemies and you start to see them like just randomly around in the area too like you'll just run into orcs brainwashed at places you've never been it kind of feels like fight club let me brand this guy for us. 
now. He's going to be on our side. The one problem is uh, Aragorn Light here will still kind of uh, target him in combat, so it's easy to accidentally kill your own guys, but that being said, you know, it's still cool, especially when you get full armies working for you. Oh my god, there's so many guys. Wave Flash is supposed to be helpful for situations like these. We tend to just use a lot of executions instead. Uh oh. Not a bother around here. Oh, because of you. So the oh, other cool thing, the cool thing with the captains is, um, let me get to my menu. So you have this whole Sauron's army. Yeah, this guy's here, you see. But I don't know his weaknesses. I don't know his strengths and weaknesses. And that can be a big problem because... It helps to go into battles knowing what their weaknesses are, because sometimes it's like, oh, they're weak to ranged weapons, and then you just, you know, stand back and plug them with arrows for like an hour. <laughs> but yeah, this game, this game's super fun. Um, the story's pretty, pretty bad though, and I think our last major note here in the hole is that, uh, don't buy the PC version of this game, because that's what we've been playing, and this thing is a pain in the ass to get running. It, it runs fine. It, it runs perfectly fine, as you can see. Games work, game works great. But, for some reason, it just will not open. Oh, didn't mean to do that to you. Sorry, bud. And you'll eventually, like, get it open, and then it's... We had it hang up on loading screen. We had to delete the game and reinstall it at some point. We, like, every time we wanted to play, we had to verify the game files. And honestly, we're so happy to stop playing the game just to be done doing that every time we want to play it. Have, like, a five-minute wait on top of it. I don't know what the deal is. I simply do not, and I couldn't find any help on, like, Steam or anything. Can I brand this guy, maybe? Oh, yeah, I can. Let's get, him, let's get him away from this guy. Stop beating your captain, you dummy! Oh, he's running. I'm not staying around for this! Nope. Come here. Come here, friendo. Oh, he's not getting far. He's not getting far. I can get him. If I, if we have, I think we actually did buy the ability where I can... Oh, I don't really need it. Okay, let's dominate him. So check check this shit out. So I dominate. I gotta command him. Um, so I'll make him murder uh, this guy. So now I can show up there. And like, my captain will show up already brainwashed to fight this guy. And he'll have like a bunch of brainwashed guys with him too. And now that captain's working for me, too. And I think he just kind of disappeared because of this big battle going on. I don't think I'm gonna free these slaves. I don't think I'm gonna be done with this battle. Is there somebody who knows the game better? It's like, use the ray flash, you idiot! Use this ability! You can just get through it fast! Uh, but yeah. So that's kind of everything we wanted to say about this game. Uh, pretty fun. Don't play it on PC. Uh, if you're if you're a big Lord of the Rings fan, you're probably going to hate this. It's so unnecessarily dark and edgy. But if you are like a fan of Assassin's Creed or the Batman Arkham games, you're gonna love this. Oh right, I forgot to talk about one more important thing in my wrap up: the game world. Pretty reasonably sized. There was like two maps of this size. Um, you can run across. Like we started here and we're already over here. You run across this thing fast, and it gives you good movement options too. Uh, nice to see an open world game with a very reasonably sized game world. Thank God. 
I don't know if Shadow of War is going to have like... I bet Shadow of War is going to be like three times as large. It's going to be like the size of the New Jersey Turnpike or whatever. Okay. But this game, very reasonably sized. I don't think 100% completion is really that absurd and ask if you're into doing that in games. But yeah, we give we give the adaptation of this game a it's more like a 2.5, but we're gonna round that up to a 3 for our round numbers. Uh not not very Lord of the Rings, but fun. This is like a four for sure. This is this game's a ton of fun. Those are both out of five, obviously. When it, when you give it something a four out of ten, and being like, "Wow, this game was so far." But yeah, uh, I think that's it for this whole. Uh, I will never stop fighting all these orcs, apparently. But yeah, thank you all for watching, and we will see you again in the future for more orc head cutting off or whatever else comes along the way. Bye, everybody.